Do you remember Spearman's concept of general intelligence? Raymond Cattell revised it and instead proposed two types of cognitive abilities. He hypothesized that we have fluid intelligence and crystallized intelligence. Fluid intelligence, or GF, is the ability to solve novel problems in new situations by using reasoning. And crystallized intelligence, or GC, is a knowledge-based ability which is strongly dependent on education and experience, so it's the ability to use learned knowledge and experiences. Cattell hypothesized that fluid intelligence declined with age, while crystallized intelligence was largely resistant to the effects of aging. Cattell's theory was almost forgotten, but Cattell's student, John L. Horn, revived it in 1966. Horn argued that fluid and crystallized intelligence were only two among several factors, and Horn eventually identified nine or ten broad abilities, but despite these revisions of the theory, the theory continued to be called GFGC theory. After a comprehensive reanalysis of earlier data, John B. Carroll proposed the Three Stratum Theory in 1993. The Three Stratum Theory is a hierarchical model with three levels. The bottom stratum consists of narrow abilities which are highly specialized, such as induction and spelling ability. In the second stratum, we find broad abilities. Carroll identified and put eight abilities in the second stratum. For the most part, Carroll did accept Spearman's concept of general intelligence, as he put the G factor in the uppermost third stratum. In 1999, Cattell and Horn's Fluid Intelligence and Crystallized Intelligence Theory, the GFGC Theory, merged with Carroll's Three Stratum Theory. This led to the Cattell, Horn, Carroll Theory, also known as the CHC Theory. This theory has greatly influenced many of the current broad IQ tests. In CHC theory, a hierarchy of factors is used. The G factor is at the top. Under it are 10 broad abilities, which in turn are subdivided into 70 narrow abilities. The 10 broad abilities are 1. Fluid Intelligence, or GF, which includes the broad ability to reason form concepts and solve new problems using unfamiliar information or novel procedures. 2. Crystallized Intelligence, or GC, which includes the breadth and depth of a person's acquired knowledge, the ability to communicate one's knowledge, and the ability to reason using previously learned experiences or procedures. 3. Quantitative Reasoning, or GQ which is the ability to comprehend quantitative concepts and relationships and to manipulate numerical symbols. 4. Reading and Writing Ability, or GRW, which includes basic reading and writing skills. 5. Short-Term Memory, or GSM, which is the ability to apprehend and hold information in immediate awareness, and then use it within a few seconds. 6. Long-Term Storage and Retrieval, or GLR. This is the ability to store information and fluently retrieve it later in the process of thinking. 7. Visual Processing, or GV, which is the ability to perceive, analyze, synthesize and think with visual patterns, including the ability to store and recall visual representations. 8. Auditory Processing, or GA, 
which is the ability to analyze, synthesize, and discriminate auditory stimuli, including the ability to process and discriminate speech sounds which may be presented under distorted conditions. 9. Processing speed, or GS which is the ability to perform automatic cognitive tasks, particularly when measured under pressure, to maintain focused attention. Examples of automatic cognitive tasks are visual exploration tasks, decision-making tasks, or doing simple mathematical calculations. 10. Decision Reaction Time Speed, or GT. This reflects the immediacy with which an individual can react to stimuli or task. This is typically measured in seconds or fractions of seconds, and when it comes to IQ testing and CHC theory, we cannot confuse it with processing speed, as psychometricians typically measure that in intervals of 2-3 to three minutes. Modern IQ tests don't necessarily measure all of these broad abilities. For example, quantitative reasoning and reading and writing abilities may be seen as measures of school achievement and not IQ, and decision reaction time speed may be difficult to measure without special equipment. Earlier, psychometricians often subdivided G into only fluid and crystallized intelligence, as fluid intelligence was thought to correspond to the nonverbal or performance subtests, and the crystallized intelligence to the verbal subtests in the earlier versions of the popular Wexler IQ test. More recent research, however, has shown that the situation is more complex than that. Modern, comprehensive IQ tests don't stop at reporting a single IQ score. Although they still give an overall score, now they also give scores for many of these more restricted abilities. This way, they identify an individual's particular strengths and weaknesses. This information came from these websites. You'll find these links below this video. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and watch this series from the start. Next Friday, I'll be back with a new episode in my series on intellectual giftedness. Till then, I only want to say three things. Thank you for watching, have a great day, and bye for now.